Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that be linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Brought to you today by the guys from U2B. Of course, they sponsor in Transfer Daily at the moment and you can get yourself these excellent t-shirts. Here's another one. Let me just move this. Yeah. U2, U2B. All right. Um, the link is in the description if you want to get hold of any of those t-shirts right now um, from the guys from U2B. And um, trust me, I've got a, good, a nice selection, but I haven't got my hands yet on that FA Cup one. I want to get that one. Um, the transfers at the moment. First of all, the shock news yesterday that we're still getting over that Raul Sanelli has left Arsenal Football Club. Bought in to head up football um, in 2018. And now, all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. He's out. And as I said in the video that I did uh, regarding it yesterday... What's really fascinating about the whole thing is that um, when Arsene Wenger left, basically it was Gazidis, Raul Sinelli and Sven Mislintat. All three gone now. <laughs> so that revolution didn't work. And um, yeah, Sinelli's out. And it's, it was a big shock. I mean, there were the rumours, as I said um, in the video I did yesterday. And if you want to sort of uh, re-watch that, um, that's on the channel. I did say um, that there were these rumours coming out about the club were very unhappy about the handling of the Nicolas Pepe um, transfer um, and were investigating the fact that we overpaid massively in that deal. Um, it's nothing to do with the player. It's nothing on the player at all. But seemingly, there seems to be some problems with the amount of money and where that money went. Um, that's one of the rumours. You can also look on it and say, did Raul Sinelli actually do a very good job? He's brought in as head of football. Um, all right, we won the FA Cup, but we finished eighth in the league, our worst ever finish. And uh, none of the signings really that he brought in, um, you know, to, to push us further, didn't really, you know, didn't really do much. Remember, um, Sinelli really did take his time in getting rid of Unai Emery, who he, he appointed, by the way. And was even thinking of giving him a new contract um, at the you know at the start of last season, even though he'd failed in Baku, he'd failed to get us into the top four. So you got to look on it and say Raul Sinelli's uh, period at the club was not a successful period at all. Um, he just did not deliver, and he is out the door now. And um, the reins have been taken over by um, Vinay uh, Ventakasham. He's he's going to be in charge, uh, more of as a CEO. He's not exactly taken the same head in as head of football. Um, but in charge of transfers now is going to be Edu and Mikel Arteta. Now, is that going to make a difference to what happens with the transfer dealings at Arsenal? Of course, both of them, ex-Arsenal players, no Arsenal through and through. Is this going to give Mikel Arteta more control? Because one of the things that we've been moaning a bit about, we've been saying certain players that have been brought in, were those Arteta signings? I still have doubts over the Cedric one, for instance. It's just my personal opinion. When we got Cedric, I was like, why do we need Cedric? And then, you know, he, he came in, he was injured. It wasn't his fault, of course, you know, the pandemic hardly played. And he's given a new contract, you know, three-year deal. Again, I mean, I was just baffled by that. We had Hector Bellerin. We had Ainsley Mains and Maitland-Niles doing really well. Why do we need Cedric? Now, I don't know if that was a Raul Sinelli thing. I don't know if that's an Edu thing. Edu's pretty close um, to Kia Drapchen. But all I know is that, you know, we just need to get our transfer business back on track. We've got some great young players coming through the academy. Um, but transfer wise, hopefully this gives a bit more control to, uh, Mikel Arteta because he knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly what he needs. Maybe just the two of them, him and Edu dealing with his transfers might help things. It kind of sort of goes back to the system where you had Arsene Wenger and Dick Law working together. Um, so, you know, even though that weren't the greatest, but, um, I'm just glad that maybe that this is going to give Mikel Arteta a little bit more control. What will happen with Ainsley Maitland-Nars? Because remember, the reports the other day were that Arteta told the board, I want to keep Ainsley Maitland-Nars. The board said, no, we want to sell him, we want to cash in. 
I don't know how much that had to do with Raul Sinelli, but he is head of football, so the ultimate decision would have um, rested with him at the time. Will they reverse that now and try and keep hold of Ainsley Maitland-Niles? That's going to be an interesting thing to see. Um, but, yeah, um, hopefully a bit more control for Mikel Arteta. Now, what about Gabriel um, from Lille? The reports out today, um, coming from uh, LE10 Sport out of France, is saying that um, a £27 million bid has been accepted for Gabriel. Uh, now, he, he, the uh, club, Lille himself, came out, the uh, club president came out and said that Gabriel's going to be leaving. Gabriel's dropped a few hints on his Instagram suggesting he's leaving. But where is he going? There are two clubs that have made a bid for him, and um, that is Arsenal and Napoli, according to Le Ten Sport. Both of them are put a bid in for £27 million. It is now up to Gabriel to decide where he's going to go. Manchester United were interested in him, but um, it looks like uh, United um, have changed the uh, tact. Uh, they're looking at... Uh, Benoit Boudichai, I can't even pronounce that surname, who plays at Monaco, but it looks like they're more in for him. So it doesn't look like they're going to be going for him. Everton had had a previous bid uh, rejected, wasn't high enough. It looks like it's a straight, you know, decision for Gabriel. Arsenal or Napoli? Now, Napoli, their decision might have to wait because, um, you know, they've still got Koulibaly there. They're apparently looking at Gabriel as a replacement for Koulibaly if Koulibaly moves on. There, there's a lot of talk that he could go to Man City. <laughs> After watching them defending last night, they could do with a Koulibaly, trust me. I mean, everybody could do a Koulibaly. But he could be on the move and they want Gabriel to replace him. Arsenal, we know we want a centre-back. We need a left-footed centre-back and Gabriel is a left-footed centre-back. Would fit us perfectly where is he going to decide to go? We might get some information on that this on that this week. Could it be Arsenal? Could he be there in an Arsenal shirt? He looks good in it already, if we can get it done. But as I always say, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but it does look like it's a straight shootout between Napoli and Arsenal. Where will he choose to go? Now, talking of that game, I just mentioned it last night. Watch the game. Great game. Um, Leon beating Manchester City by uh, uh, three goals uh, to one. Manchester City's defending in that game, by the way. <laughs> I know people diss Arsenal. They talk about, oh, Mustafi, this. And that. It was dreadful. And the chance that Sterling missed, I still can't believe that he missed that. You know, he's been so clinical this season. But Manchester City out of the uh, Champions League to Leon. Um, big up Jeff Adelaide. I sent him a little message um, yesterday. Uh, me and him have been sort of been messaging back and forth um, after the Juventus game and after the game yesterday. And he actually said in his message, he goes, you know, he goes, um, him matching up with Serb Canabri, he goes, Gunners for life. That's what he said. That's going to be the semi final. They're going to be taking on Leon, of course, um, Bayern Munich. But one guy who stood out in that game again yesterday was Hossim Oreir. Have I pronounced that right? I know a lot of people have been getting at me in the comments. I'm not French. But Hossim Oreir, um, he had a brilliant performance in that game. Now, he's been linked with Arsenal. We know this. Even up to uh, yesterday on the show, I was talking about how there was the reports coming out of um, France that Edu had called the hierarchy at Lyon and said, listen, Let's do a swap deal. Gwenduzi for Aurier. Uh, that was turned down. Um, they said they want money for him. They are prepared to let him leave this summer. Uh, they've they've almost, you know, accepted that he will be going. But Leon, <laughs> they drive a hard bargain for their players, as all the French clubs do, and they want money. They want money for him, right? And when you see it, some of the players they've got coming out of their academy, you know, and they just seem to have this line of just great players. I mean, last year, was it Nebel Fakir? They've moved him on. This guy's come in and he's been absolutely brilliant. And as I said yesterday, I was very, very impressed with his performance against Man City. Um, he was creative, but also he was really disciplined in the system that Leon played, which, by the way, they literally, it's almost like they saw what we did to City in the semi-final of the FA Cup and they did the same thing. 
Um, but he was really disciplined in that system. And I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch, Aurea. And he is available. We do need a creative player. Could we possibly go in and get this done? As I said, we want him because we've tried with this uh, swap deal for Gwenduzi, but that hasn't worked. Could we, if we sold Gwenduzi, raise enough funds to try and get him? Is he a priority or do you still think, you know, he's something, somebody like a Thomas Partey? But certainly I was very, very impressed with him um, yesterday. Um, that, was a, that was a great performance by him and certainly he would definitely add something to the team. Still only 22 as well, um, Hossam Aurea. So let's see how that one um, turns out. Uh, Arsenal player on the move, actually, is uh, the youngster uh, Matt Smith. Now, Matt Smith's been in a couple of um, the Arsenal squads towards the end of the season. Um, Arteta throwing him in. He was actually in the FA Cup semi-final and final squad. I think he was even in the quarter-final one as well. And he got a medal. He got an FA Cup winner's medal without even playing a minute on the pitch. Um, but he's gone on loan now um, to Swindon to help him to develop. He's a midfield player. He's obviously um, rated by Arteta because, as I said, Arteta um, trusted him enough to have him in the first-team squad. Um, but they're sending him out to get some more experience. So I think that's a good move for him going out to Swindon. Also talked today about Reese Nelson. Reese Nelson um, apparently wanted by Besiktas over there in Turkey. Now, um, of course, um, Mohamed El Neni was on loan at Besiktas. Very successful um, loan for him, apart from the fact that they didn't want to pay him his wages. And he had a big dispute with um, Besiktas towards the end of that deal. And subsequently, he's not going to be going back to Besiktas on loan. Um, but Reese Nelson, rumoured to be Besiktas' number one target, um, some rumours saying. Now, whether I, I I can't see that one happening. If I was Reese Nelson, I want to get paid, right? So, you know, the references of um, that will come from Mohamed El Neni won't be great. But um, he has been linked um, with a move today. Talking of that, actually, Özil as well. I was reading as well um, that Raúl Sanelli got in contact with Galatasaray and was offering them um, Mesut Özil. Um, they, they they weren't interested. They can't afford the the, the money, but. That was one of the last moves he was sort of trying to make. And what's going to happen with Ozil as well now that things have sort of changed with the head of football going? Um, interesting times ahead in the transfer window. They're saying that nothing's really going to change with the targets thereafter, etc. But who knows? We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And um, hopefully it doesn't affect this guy signing. The rumours are it's not going to affect it. But of course... Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We've got the Willian deal done. Um, I think everybody expected that to be the first one. Could this be something, him signing up permanently, could this be something that could get announced this week? I think with Sonelli going, it would be great to have a, a good news story with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang saying, yes, I've got faith in what's going on now with Edu and Arteta, and I'm going to sign the thing. We're going to have to wait to see um, what happens with that one. But hopefully that can be something that can get announced this week. Uh, thanks for watching the show today. Don't forget the guys from U2B. Um, they are the sponsors of the show. So uh, the link is in the description if you're interested in any of their stuff. Um, I did that um, promotion yesterday with Boohoo Man. I'm going to be selecting um, the winner of that um, for that £800 voucher and announcing that on tomorrow's show. Um, so look out for that as well. Um, but listen, thanks for watching the show today. Robbie here from AFTV. We just got to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels, over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.